drop me. Pluck me like a goddamn whatever it is, creeping vine, and throw me over your shoulder like an old shoe. George? George? George, what? What are you doing? You hiding or something? George! Oh, for Christ! Deserted, abandoned, left out in the cold like an old pussy cat. Can I get you a drink, Martha? Oh, thank you, George. That's very kind of you. No, Martha, no. Why, I'd do anything for you. Would you, George? Why, I would do anything for you, too. Would you, Martha? Why, certainly, George. Martha, I have misjudged you, and I have misjudged you, too, George. Where is everybody? Hump the hostess! <laughs> to her own vices <laughs> at, uh, at, at something o'clock in the old AM, Daddy White Mouse. Oh, do you really have red eyes, Daddy? Do you? Do you? Let me see. Let me see. Oh, you do. You do have red eyes. That's because you cry all the time, don't you, Daddy? Yes, you do. You cry all the time. I'll give all you bastards five to come out from where you're hiding. I cry all the time, too, Daddy. Mm -mm. I cry all the time, but deep inside, so no one can see me. <laughs> yeah, I cry all the time. And Georgie cries all the time, too. You know, we both cry all the time. And then what do we do? We cry, and we take our tears, and we put them in the ice box, <laughs> in the goddamn ice trays until they're frozen, <laughs> and then we put them in our drinks. shield wipers on my eyes because I married you, baby. Oh, Martha, you'll be a songwriter yet. My God, you've gone crazy, too. Clink? I said you've gone crazy, too. Probably, probably. I come back downstairs, and what happens? Ooh, what happened? My wife has gone into the can with a liquor bottle, and she winks at me. 
winks at me. Oh, she's never one catch you. What a shame. She's lying down on the floor again, the tile's all curled up, and she starts peeling the label off the liquor bottle, the brandy bottle. Never get the deposit back that way. And I ask her what she's doing, and she goes, shh, nobody knows I'm here. And I come back in here, and they're sat there going, clink, for God's sake, clink. Clink! You've all gone crazy. Mm, yes, sad, but true. Where's your husband? He is vanished. <laughs> Booked. You're all crazy. Nuts. Oh, shit, it's the refuge we take when the unreality of the world weighs too heavy on our tiny heads. Oh, relax. Sink into it. You're no better than anybody else. I think I am. Oh, you're certainly a flop in some departments. I beg your pardon? I said you're certainly a flop I'm in I'm sorry some... you're disappointed. Didn't say I was disappointed, stupid. You should try me some time when I haven't been drinking for ten hours. I wasn't maybe... talking about your potential. I was talking about your goddamn performance. Oh. Your potential is fine. It's dandy. Absolutely dandy. I haven't seen such a dandy potential in a long time, but... <laughs> Oh, baby, you sure are a flop. Everybody's a flop to you. Your husband's a flop, I'm a flop. You're all flops. I am the Earth Mother and you're all flops. <laughs> I disgust me. I pass my life in crony. Totally pointless infidelities. <laughs> Would be infidelities. Hump the hostess. That's a laugh. A bunch of boozed up, impotent lunkheads. Oh, Martha makes goo goo eyes, and the lunkheads grin and roll their beautiful, beautiful eyes back and grin some more. And Martha licks her chops, and the lunkheads slap over to the bar to pick up a little courage, and they pick up a little courage, and they bounce back over to old Martha, who does a little dance for them, which heats them all up mentally. So they slap over the bar again to pick up a little more courage, and their wives and sweethearts stick their noses up in the air, right through the ceiling sometimes, which sends the lunkheads back over to the soda fountain where they fuel up some more while Martha Pooh sits there with her dress up over her head, suffocating. You don't know how stuffy it is with your dress up over your head, suffocating, waiting for the lunkheads. So, finally, they get their courage up. But that's all, baby. Oh, my, there is sometimes some very nice potential, but oh, my, my, my. But... That's how it is in civilized society. God, all the gorgeous lunkhead poor babies. There is only one man in my life who has ever made me happy. Do you know that one? The, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the lawnmower or something? No. Oh, God, I'd forgotten him. Oh, when I think about him and me, it's almost like being a voyeur. No, I didn't mean him. I meant George, of course. Uh, George, my husband. You're kidding. Oh, uh, am I? You must be. Him? Him. Sure, sure. You don't believe it? Why, of course I do. You always deal in appearances. Oh, for God's sake. George, who is out somewhere there in the dark. George, who is good to me and whom I revile who understands me and whom I push off, who can make me laugh when I choke it back in my throat, who can hold me at night so that it's warm and whom I will bite so there's blood, who keeps learning the games we play as quickly as I can change the rules, who can make me happy and I do not wish to be happy. Yes, I do wish to be happy. George and Martha. Sad, sad, sad. Sad. Whom I will not 
forgive for having come to rest. My, for having seen me and having said, yes, this will do. Who has made the hideous, the hurting, the insulting mistake of loving me and must be punished for it. George and Martha said, 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 said. Who tolerates, which is intolerable. Who is kind, which is cruel. Who understands, which is beyond comprehension. George and Martha, sad, sad, sad. Someday, some night, some stupid liquor-ridden night, I will go too far. And I will either break the man's back or push him off for good, which is what I deserve. Well, I don't think he's got a vertebra intact. <laughs> oh, you don't? You don't think so? <laughs> oh, little boy. You got yourself hunched over that microphone of yours. The microscope. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't see anything. Do you see everything but the goddamn mind? You see all the little specks and crap, but you don't see what goes on, do you? I know when a man's had his back broken, I can see that. Oh, can you? You're damn right. <laughs> you know so little, and you're going to take over the world. All right, now. So you think a man's got his back broken because he makes like a clown and walks bent? Huh? Is that really all you know? I said all right. Oh, oh the stallion's mad. The, the, the gelding's all upset. <laughs> you, you swing wild, don't you? Ha! Just anywhere. Ha! I'm a gatling gun. Ah! Aimless butchery. Pointless. Oh. A poor little bastard. He had outed everything. Go answer the door. What did you say? I said go answer the door. What are you, deaf? You, you want me to go answer the door. That's right, lunkhead. Answer the door. I mean, there must be something you can do well. Or, or are you too drunk to do that too? Can't get the latch up either? Look, there's no need to... Come on, answer it. Because you, you can... Be, you can you can be houseboy around here for a while. You can start off being a houseboy right now. Oh, look, lady, I'm no flunky to you. Oh, sure you are. You're ambitious, aren't you, boy? You didn't chase me around the kitchen and up the goddamn stairs out of mad, driven passion, did you now? You were just thinking a little bit about your career, weren't you? Well, you can just houseboy your way up the ladder for a while. There's no limit to you, is there? No Baby, none. Go answer the door. I'm coming for Christ's sake. <laughs> Wonderful, marvelous. Oh, just a gigolo. Everywhere I go. Stop that. Keep, oh, sorry, sorry, baby. Okay, come on, come on. Just op open the little door. Come on. Christ. Oh, oh, lovely. Flores, flores para los muertos. Sonny, you come home for your birthday at last. Stay away from me. That is the houseboy, for God's sake. Really? That isn't our own little Sonny Jim, our own little all-American something or other? I certainly hope not. He's been acting awful funny if he is. <laughs> Ooh, I bet, Chippy, Chippy, Chippy. I, uh, <laughs> I, I'll bring you these flowers, Marta, because I, uh, because <laughs> you's a oddy. Pansies, rosemary, violence, my wedding bouquet. Well, if you two kids don't mind, I think I'll... Ah, you stay right where you are and make my hubby a drink. No, Martha, no, that would be too much, baby. He's your house boy, not mine. I'm nobody's house boy. No, I'm nobody's house boy now. <laughs> Vicious. Children, is that it? Vicious children with their old so sad games, hopscotching their way through life, etc., etc. Is that right? Something like it. Screw, baby. Him can't. Him too full of booze. <laughs> really? Here, dump these in some gin. Aw, 
What a terrible thing to do to Martha's snapdragons. Oh, is that what they are? Yep, and here I went out into the moonlight to pick them for Martha tonight and for tomorrow for our sunny boy for his birthday. Well, there is no moon now. I saw it go down from the bedroom. <laughs> the bedroom. Well, there was a moon. No, there couldn't have been a moon. Well, there was. There is. There is no moon. The moon went down. There is a moon. The moon is up. I'm afraid you must be mistaken. No, no. There is no goddamn moon. Martha, my dear, I did not go picking snapdragons in the stony dark. I did not go stumbling around Daddy's greenhouse in the pitch. Yes, you did. You would. Martha, I do not pick flowers in the blink. I have never robbed a hot house without there is a light from heaven. There is no moon. The moon went down. That may very well be chastity. The moon may very well have gone down, but it came back up again. It does not come back up when the moon is gone down it stays down you don't know anything if the moon went down then it came back up bullshit ignorance such ignorance what are you calling ignorance once once when i was sailing past mallorca talking on deck with a correspondent about roosevelt the moon went down thought about it for a little considered it you know what i mean then pop it came back up just like that that is not true that is such a lie you must not call everything a lie martha must she hell i don't know when you people are lying or what you're damn right yeah, well you're not supposed to right at any rate, I was sailing past Mallorca. No, you never sailed past Mallorca. Martha. You were never in the Mediterranean at all, I ever. certainly was. My mommy and daddy took me there as a college graduation present. Nuts. Was this after you killed them? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe not, too. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Damn you. <laughs> Truth and illusion, who can tell the difference, eh, toots, eh? Well, you were never in the Mediterranean, truth or illusion, either way. If I was never in the Mediterranean, how did I get to the Aegean? Overland! Yeah. Don't side with her, houseboy. I'm not a houseboy. Look, I know the game, you don't make it in the sack, you're the houseboy. Oh, I am not a houseboy. <laughs> no? No? Well, then you must have made it in the sack, yes? Yes? <gasps> Come on, someone's lying around here. Somebody isn't playing the game straight. Come on, come on, who's lying? Martha, come on! Tell him I am not a houseboy. No, you're not a houseboy. So be it. Truth and illusion, George. You don't know the difference. No, but we must carry on as though we did. Amen. Snap went the dragons. Huh? Here we go round the mulberry bush, huh? Thank you. Skip it. I said, here we go round the mulberry yeah, bush, yeah. huh? No, we know. Snap go the dragons. Snap. Don't, George. Snap. Don't do that. Don't. Shut up, stud. I'm not a stud. Snap, no? Well, then you must be a houseboy, huh? Which is it? Which are you? Make up your mind. Either way, snap. You disgust me. Does it matter to you, George? <laughs> Snap. No, actually, it doesn't. Either way, I've had it. Stop throwing those goddamn things at me. Either way. Snap. Do you want me to do something to him? Leave him alone. If you're a houseboy, baby, you can pick up after me. If you're a stud, you can go protect your plow. Either way, either way, everything. Oh, Lord. Truth or illusion, George, doesn't it matter to you at all? Snap. Got your answer, baby? Got it. You gird your blue-veined loins. Now, we've got one more game to play, and it's called Bringing Up Baby. Oh, for Lord's George, sake. I don't want any fuss. You don't want any scandal around here, do you, big boy? You don't want to wreck things, do you? Huh? You want to keep to your timetable, don't you? Then sit. And you, pretty miss, you like fun and games, don't you? You're a sport from way back, aren't you? All right, all right, George, all right. Good, good. But we're not all here. You, 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 your little wifelet isn't here. Oh, look, she's had a rough night now. She's in the can. Well, we can't play without everyone here. That's a fact. We got to have your little wife. Sue! Sue! Cut that! Then get your butt out of that chair and go bring the little dip back in here. <laughs> now, be a good puppy. Fetch. <laughs> good puppy, go fetch. <laughs> One more game. I don't like what's going to happen. Do you know what it is? No, but I don't. Maybe you will, Martha. No, George. Well, it's a real fun game, Martha. No, more games, George. Oh, 
one more, Martha, one more game, then Betty, bye. Everybody pack up his tools and baggage and stuff and go home. You and me, we're gonna climb them well-worn stairs. Oh, George, please. Oh, yes, baby. Oh, George, no. Oh, it'll all be done with before you know it. Oh, George. No climb stairs with Georgie. Oh, no more games. Just games, I don't want no more games. Oh, sure you do, original game girl, and of course you no, do. No, not the ugly games, ugly, no, this new one. Oh, you'll love it, Martha. Oh, no, George. You'll have a ball. Don't, Don't you touch me. You keep your paws clean for the undergraduates, huh? No, now you listen to me. You've had quite an evening, quite a night for yourself, and you can't just cut it off whenever you think you've got enough blood in your mouth. Now we are going to go on, and I'm going to have at you, and it's going to make your performance tonight look like an Easter pageant. Now, I want you to get yourself a little alert. Stop no, it. I want Stop. some life in you, baby. Mm. Pull yourself together. I want you on your feet and slugging, sweetheart, because I am going to come at you, and I want you up for Stop it. it. What do you want? An equal battle, baby, that is all. You will get it. I want you mad. I'm mad. Get madder. Don't worry about it. Good for you, girl. Now, we're going to play this one to the death. Yours. You'd be surprised. Now, here come the tots. You be ready for this. I'm ready for you. Here we are. Hip hop. Hip hop. You're a bunny, honey? I'm a bunny, honey. Well, now, how's a bunny? Bunny, funny. Bunny, funny. Good for bunny. Come on, George. Yeah, honey, funny bunny. <laughs> Jesus, God. All right. Here we go. Last game. All sit. Sit down, Martha. This is a civilized game. Get on with it. Hello, dear. It's almost dawn, for God's sake. Hello, dear. Well, say hello to your wife, but your little bunny, for God's sake. Hello, honey. Oh, that was nice, huh? Well, now, we've had a, a real good evening, all things considered. <laughs> we sat around and got to know each other, had fun and games. Curl up on the floor, for example. The tile. The tile. Snap the dragon. Peel the label. Peel the what? Label. Peel the label. I peel labels. We all peel labels, sweetie. And when you get through the skin, all three layers, through the muscles, slosh aside the organs, them which is still sloshable, and get down to the bone. Do you know what you do then? No. Well, when you get down to the bone, you haven't got all the way yet. There's something inside the bone. The marrow. That's what you gotta get at. Oh, I see. The marrow. But... Bones can be pretty resilient, especially in the young... Now, take our son. Who? Martha's and my little joy. Do you mind if I... No, no, go right ahead. George. Yes, Martha. What are you doing? Why, I'm talking about our son, Luck. Don't. George. Isn't Martha something? Here we are on the eve of our boy's homecoming, on the eve of his 21st birthday, on the eve of his majority, and Martha says, don't talk about Just it. Just don't. But I want to, Martha. It's very important that we talk about him. Now, Bunny and the, uh, the uh, whichever he is here, they don't know much about Junior, and I think they should. Just don't. You, you, uh, you, you want to play Bringing Up Baby, don't you? Are you snapping at me? That's right. You want to hear about our bouncy boy, don't you? Yeah, sure. And you want to hear about him, too, don't you? Whom? <laughs> Martha's and my son. Now, do you want to talk about him, Martha, or shall I? Don't. George. All righty. Well, now, let me see. Well, he's a nice kid. He really is. In spite of his home life. I mean, most kids, they'd grow up neurotic, what with Martha carrying on the way she does, sleeping till 4 in the p.m., climbing all over the poor bastard, trying to break the bathroom door down to wash him in the tub when he was 16, dragging strangers home at all hours. Okay! Martha? <laughs> That's enough! Well, do you want to take over? Why would anybody want to walk somebody who's 16 years old? Well, for Christ's sake, honey. Well, why? Because it's her baby poo. All right, ours. You want ours. You'll have it. Do you want a drink? Martha. Yes. 
We don't have to hear about it if you don't want to. Uh, who says so? so? Are you in a position to set the rules around here? No. Good boy. You'll go far. All right, Martha, your recitation, please. What, George? Our son. Our son was born in a September night, a night not unlike tonight or tomorrow, and 21 years ago. See, I told you. It was an easy birth. Oh, Martha, no, you labored. How you labored. It was an easy birth once it had been accepted, relaxed into. Ah, oh, yes, better. It was an easy birth once it had been Accepted, and I was young. And I was younger. <laughs> and I was young, and he was a healthy child, a red, boring child with slippery, firm limbs. Martha thinks she saw him at delivery. With slippery, firm limbs and a full head of black, fine, fine hair, which all oh, later, later became blonde as the sun. He was a healthy child. And I had wanted a child. Oh, I had wanted a child. A son, a daughter. A child. A child. And I had my child. Our child. Our child. And we raised him. We did. We raised him. With teddy bears and an antique bassinet from Austria and no nurse. With teddy bears and transparent floating goldfish and a pale blue bed with cane at the headboard when he was older. Cane which he wore through finally with his little hands in his sleep. Nightmare. Sleep. He was a restless child. Oh, Lord. Asleep. And a croup tent. A pale green croup tent. And, and the shining kettle hissing in the one light of the room. That time he was sick those four days. And animal crackers. And the bow and arrow he kept under his bed. The arrows with the rubber cup at their tip. At their tip, which he kept beneath his bed. Why? Why, Martha? For fear. For fear of... Well, for fear, just that, for fear. And, and sandwiches on, on Sunday nights and Saturdays. Oh, Saturdays. The banana boat. <laughs> the whole peeled banana scooped out on top with, with green grapes for the crew. A double line of green grapes. And along the side, stuck to the boat with toothpicks, orange slices, shields. And for the oar? A, a, a carrot. Or a swizzle stick, whichever was easier. No, a carrot. And his eyes were green. Green with, if you, if you peered so deep, so deep into them, bronze. Bronze, parentheses around the irises, such green eyes. Blue, green, brown. Oh, and he loved the sun. He was tanned before and after everyone. And in the sun, his hair became fleece. Fleece. Beautiful. Beautiful boy. Absolve Domine animus omnium fidelium defunctorum ab omni ventula delectorum. And school and summer camp and sledding and swimming. Et gratia tua ille succurrente merianta revadere judicia multi omnes. <laughs> how he broke his arm and how funny it was. No, no, it hurt him, but... Oh, it was, it was, it was funny. It was, in, it was in a field, his very first cow, the first he'd ever seen. And he, and he went into the field to the cow where the cow was grazing, head down, busy. And, and he, 
He mooed at it. <laughs> yes, he, he did. He mooed at it. And, and the beast, oh, surprised, swung its head up and mooed at him. All three years of him. And he ran, startled, and fell, and broke his poor arm, poor lad. Yet Lucia to turn her beatitudine per cruel. George cried, helpless George cried. I carried the poor lamb, and George was snuffling beside me. I carried the child, having fashioned a sling, and across the great fields. In paradisum dedicante angeli. And as he grew, and as he grew so wise, he walked evenly between us, a, a hand out to each of us for what we could offer by way of support, affection, teaching, even love. And these hands still to hold us off a bit for mutual protection, to protect us all from George's weakness and my necessary greater strength to protect himself and us. Memoria eterna erit justis abotitioni mala non timibit. So wise, so wise. What is this? What are you doing? Shh. Okay. So beautiful. So wise. Well, all truth being relative. It is true. Beautiful. Wise. Now, there's a real mother talking. I want the child. Hug. I want the child. On principle? I want the child. I want the baby. <laughs> of course, this state, this perfection. Couldn't last, not with George, not with George around. There, see, I knew she'd shift. Be still. Oh, sorry, mother. Can't you be still? Dominus Fobiscum. <laughs> not with George around. A drowning man takes down those nearest George tried. But, oh, God, how I fought him. God, how I fought him. <laughs> Lesser states can't stand those above them. Weakness, imperfection cries out against strength. Goodness and innocence, and George tried. How did I try, Martha? How did I try? What? How did you? What? Oh, no, no. No, no, no. No, he... He grew. He grew up. Our son is grown up. And he is away at school, at college, and he is fine. Everything is fine. Oh, come off it, Martha. No, that is all. Just a minute. You can't cut a story off like that, sweetheart. Now, you were going to say something. Now, say it. No. All right, well, I will. No. You see, Martha here stops just when the going gets good, just when things get a little tough. Now, Martha, here is a misunderstood little girl. She really is. Not only did she have a husband who is a bog, a younger than she is bog, albeit. Not only did she have a husband who is a bog, she has as well a tiny problem with spiritous liquors like she can't get enough. No more, George. And on top of all that, poor way down girl, plus... A father doesn't give a damn whether she lives or dies, who couldn't care less what happens to his only daughter. And on top of all that, she has a son. A son who fought her every inch of the way, who did not want to be turned into a weapon against his father, who did not want to be used as a goddamn club. Every time Martha here didn't get things the way she wanted lies, them. Lies, lies. Lies, all right. A son who would not disown his father who came to him for advice and information, for love that wasn't mixed with sickness. And you know what I mean, Martha. Who could not tolerate the slashing, braying residue that called itself his mother. His mother, ha! All right, you. A son 
who was so ashamed of his father that he asked me once if it possibly wasn't true, as he had heard from some cruel boys, maybe, that he was not our child, who could not tolerate the shabby failure his father had become. Lies. Uh, lies who would not bring his girlfriends to the house. In shame of his mother. Of his Father, I, who writes letters only to me. Ah, so you think to me at my office. Liar. I have a stack of them. You have no letters. And you have. He has no letters and a son who spends his summers away, away from his family on any pretext because he can't stand the shadow of a man flickering around the edges of a house. Who spends his summers away, and he does, who spends his summers away because there isn't any room for him in a house full of empty gin bottles, strange man and a harrod. Liar. Liar. Son who I have raised as best I can against vicious odds, against the corruption of weakness and petty revenges. A son who is deep in his gut, sorry to ever have been born. Libere me domine de mortu eternum. The one thing, the one thing I have tried to carry pure and unscathed through the sewer of this marriage, through the sick nights and the stupid, pathetic days, through the derision and the laughter, oh God, the laughter, and through one failure after another, one failure compounding another failure, each attempt more sickening and more numbing than the one before, the one thing. The one person I have tried to protect, to raise above the mire of this vile, crushing marriage. The one light in all this hopeless darkness, our son. Stop it, stop it. Kiri Ellison, Christy Ellison, Kiri Ellison. Just stop it. Why, don't you like it, baby? You can't do this. Well, who says? I say. Tell us why. No. Is this game over? Yes, yes, it is. No, no, it isn't. Not by a long shot. Marta! I have a surprise for you. It's about our sunny gym. Oh, more, George. Yes, Marta. Be for B. I'm running this show. Sweetheart, I have some bad news for you. Well, for both of us, of course. Some rather sad news. Wait, what? What is this? While you were out of the room, while the two of you were out of the room, I don't know where, hell, you must have been somewhere. While you were out of the room for a while, well, the doorbell chimed and it was... Now I find it hard to tell you, Marcus. Tell me. <coughs> um, what it was. It was good old Western Union. Some little boy, about 70. That's crazy, Billy. That's right, Marta. It was crazy, Billy. And he had a telegram for us, and I have to tell you about it. Why didn't they phone it? Why did he bring it? Why didn't they telephone it? Some telegrams you have to deliver, Marta. Some telegrams you can't phone. What do you mean? I can barely bring myself to say it. Ooh, Marta. I'm afraid our boy won't be coming home for his birthday. Of course he is. No, Martha. Of course he is. I say he is. He can't, Martha. He is. I say so. Martha. Our son is dead. He was killed late in the afternoon. <laughs> On a country road, with his learner's permit in his pocket, he swerved to avoid a porcupine and drove straight into... You can't do that. A large tree. You cannot do that. Oh, my God. I thought you should know. Oh, my God, no. No, no, no. You cannot do that. You can't decide that for yourself. I will not let you do that. We'll need to leave around noon, I suppose. I will not let you decide these things. Because there are 
matters of identification, no. natural no, no. No, you arrangements can't. that no, have to be made. Can't do this. I will not let you get your hands on me. You don't seem to understand. I didn't do anything. Now pull yourself together. Our son is dead. Can you get that you, into your you head? You can't decide these things. Oh, baby, you let me go. Now you listen to me, and you listen carefully. We got a telegram. There was a car accident, and he died. Poof, just like that. Now, how do you like it? No! Let her go now. She'll be all right. No! He is not dead. He is not dead. He is dead. Kiri Ellison, Christy Ellison, Kiri Ellison. You cannot! You may not decide these things! He hasn't decided anything, lady. It's not his doing. He doesn't have the power. That's right. I'm not a god. I don't have the power over life and death, do I? You can't kill him! You can't have him die! Lady, can you... You can't! There was a telegram, Martha. Show it to me! Show me the telegram. I ate it. <laughs> Did you just say to me? I ate it. really think that's the way to treat her at a time like this? Making an ugly goddamn joke like that, huh? You are not gonna get away with this. You know the rule, for Christ's sake, Martha. You know the rule. No! What are you two talking about? I can kill him when I want to. He is our child. Yes, and you bore him and it was a good He thing. is our child. Yes, and I have killed him. No! Yes! I understand this. Do you? Jesus Christ, you think I understand this? Well, good for you, Buster. Jesus Christ, you think I understand this? You have no right. You have no right at all. I have the right, Martha. We never talked about it, that's all. I could kill him whenever I wanted to. But why? Why? Because you broke our rule, baby. Because you mentioned him. You mentioned him to someone I else. I did not. I never did. Yes, you did. Who? Who? Me. You mentioned him to me. God. I forget. I forget. Oh, God, if it's late. And it's night, and, and and everybody is talking, and I and I I want to mention him, but I I hold on, I hold on, but I have wanted to so often. George, there was no need, there was no need, but I mentioned him, all right. But you didn't have to push it over the edge. You didn't have to kill him. Clear sky from Patches. I know. You didn't have to, to have him die, George. Requiem eternum, donna est domine. That wasn't needed. It'll be dawn soon. I think the party's over. You couldn't have any. We couldn't. We couldn't. Bedtime, children. It's way past your bedtime. Honey. You two go now. Yes. Uh, 
I'd like to. Good night. Good night. Want anything, Martha? No. No. <laughs> no, thanks. All right. Time for bed. Yes. Are you tired? Yes. I am. <coughs> Did you have to? Yes. It was. You had to? Yes. I don't know. It was. Time. Was it? Yes. It will be better. I don't know. It will be. Maybe. I'm not sure. Well. Just. Suppose maybe we could. No, Martha. Yes. No. You all right? Yes. Who's afraid of the one I want? The one I want? The one I want? Who's afraid of the one I want? Who's 